what's up guys? Today we're taking a look at a game called Jackaxe. And it's got a pretty catchy opening opening theme, right? Alright, enough of that. <laughs> so, we're gonna take a deep look into Jackaxe today. At the end of the video we're gonna do our pros, cons, and final thoughts. So stick around for that. So, we're gonna start, as we always do, we're gonna jump into options. Resolution, full screen, controls, you can change your controls, and I highly recommend a controller for this one. I think it's very, very important. It plays a lot better with a controller. I always try to make mouse and keyboard work, but I really, really do like the controller for this one. So I'm going to start with a new game, and one thing you will see, co-op, right? That's awesome. But we're going to do single player, because I have no friends, and we're going to start the game. <laughs> You see we have um, quite a few difficulties available, and I'm going to jump into curse mode after this. I'm going to show you guys what that's like, because I was pleasantly surprised by that one. That's that's pretty interesting. So, when the game starts out, we have a bunch of dialogue we're going to skip through, and they have almost like these animated JRPG type of uh, designs for the characters there during the text, and it looks, looks pretty good. I like that. I like that design. But, when the game starts... We're gonna run. We're gonna run to the side here and we're gonna get started and we're gonna go through a little bit of a tutorial. The game's gonna teach us how to ground pound and how to progress, right? Now, one of the most important things in the game is in the title. It's the axe. So let's start off by getting our axe because that's pretty much required to play. So this game plays a lot like, uh, like Super Meat Boy, but in my opinion, this game is leagues better. I really, really enjoy this one a lot more than I did Super Meat Boy because this one's got a little bit of combat in it. It's got enemies, it's got boss battles, which we will get into. We will show that as well because I think that's that's an important part of the game. It's got little mini games and it's got a lot of death, a lot of practice. And I will show you. I'll show you exactly how that's going to work. So. Beginning of the game, we're going to get our handy-dandy axe over here. This thing is very, very important to progress through the game and complete our, our puzzles. And I'm telling you, this game gets hard. There's also a lot of secrets in the game. So, we can throw our axe and not only use it to fight, but we can use it to propel ourselves. And there's a lot of momentum as well. So, you'll kind of fly past your axe and, and propel yourself in a way. And you can use that to cover large gaps and, and complete puzzles that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. So we got our axe. We can use it to break our vines, and we can use it to dash across spike traps like that and proceed on. You can also use it to pick up coins for you like that. You can break these little ice cubes. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to wall jump up here. And I'm probably going to die. Or I can use the axe to propel me up like that and we will destroy the vines with the axe. Now one thing you'll notice, when our axe is not in our hand, these little spikes activate, see that? So if I propel myself and pick up my axe midair like that, it'll disable the spikes. During the game, you'll collect these runes, and those runes are very, very helpful to progress. Otherwise, you won't be able to proceed with the game. You need them to open doors and fight bosses and, and all of that very, very interesting stuff and lovely features that we like to see in games like this. So, we're gonna go ahead and collect some runes, we're gonna go through some puzzles, and I promise you, this gets difficult. This definitely gets really hard, and it takes a lot of practice, and I've been trying, I've been practicing, but I, I am not great, admittedly, I am not great. These are definitely not my, like, this isn't my expertise when it comes to uh, gaming genres, but I've been doing rather well, I suppose, for the uh, the practice I've been getting. So, like I said, there's enemies in the game. There's there's combat. You can kill them with your axe. And there's boss fights. We will definitely get to that towards the end of the video a bit. There we go. And these enemies will respawn. But you can also use them to jump and propel you. And I'm going to jump right into another bat while I'm trying to show that. So some of these get pretty difficult. Um, I think this one I gotta... <laughs> I've had quite a few laughs during this game. 
Ooh. It's a tough one. And the room runs away from you. It thinks it's clever. So we're gonna go, go back, and we're gonna get it. Now, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit, because I want you guys to see exactly what this game has in store, not just play through the game. That's not what this video is all about. It's all about showing the entirety of the game, right? Wait. Let's cut that one out. Cut, cut that out. That didn't happen. Um, let's jump ahead. Let's show what else the game has. Let's do it. So, we kind of escape the first dungeon. We get to a little bit of, like, almost like a hub. We're in this frozen tundra-like place. And one thing you'll see is this game does have a fair amount of secrets as well. Take a look at that tree right there. See the sparkles below it? Hidden room! So, that, that, I'm gonna give that secret to you guys. I'm, I'm gonna give that to you. But as you progress through the game, this is still like in that hub type of area. There's villagers around you can talk to. But as you progress through the game, you're going to continue to find runes, continue to complete challenges and puzzles. You'll run into new enemy types like that. They throw snowballs at you. You'll come across NPCs that you can talk to. Most of them don't have anything very important to say, but there are some that'll give you some hints. Say, hey, you know, I think there's something under that tree. And you'll kind of... Damn it. And you'll, um... Hopefully use that for a hint to go find your secret get your runes your your money and stuff and there are some mini games in the game such as this now i won't spend too much time on this but there is an achievement associated with this and it requires you to juggle and he'll throw more and more little stars here and you gotta juggle them and they can only touch they can touch the floor but it's only for a certain amount of time i like got like a second or two but anyway, you get rewarded for doing well in those and getting a good time in it. So you will see some mini games as you progress through the game. And like I said, there's some secrets, right? Bullseye, a target. Let's throw our axe at it. <gasps> Reminds me of like old Mario games, right? You get like little secrets as this timer going, you get the little ticking. And there we go. We completed that one. That was a little bit of a secret, I suppose, right? Okay, I'm gonna give you I'll give you that secret too. I'll try not to spoil any more though. I mean, I'm just enjoying the cool breeze. So mostly useless stuff, but some of them do have some good information. Now, oh, almost, almost got killed by a bat. There's these little claw grip things that allow you to kind of rest in the middle of it and get a uh, get a little bit of a checkpoint so you can re refresh your axe throw, right? Then we have tint dust, where we can use gold to change the color of our character if we want to. Let's go with. What do you guys like? What do you guys like? This one's, like, different, right? That's th These are kind of similar, I guess. Let's go with the red. There we go. Look at that. Now we changed the color of our character. So if you're into that, it's got that. And then this one here, this is how we use our runes to kind of progress. I'll show you that in just a bit as we get more runes. We're only at 12 out of, out of 15 that we need. And we also got a boss fight to do. So let's go. Let's go kill us a boss, right? Let's do it. Okay. So here we are at the boss room. We're gonna go ahead and enter this thing. We're gonna get a spinning ball of snow, which turns out to be our boss, our flying Yeti. Throw snowballs, you wanna dodge those, and then he's gonna slam down onto the ground and he spawn those those ice spikes. You wanna dodge those because they will kill you. Then you wanna get him to slam down onto the ice bricks that spawn. So every time he slams down, an ice brick will spawn like that, but you wanna have him hit that because if he hits that, it will stun him, allowing us to do damage. So, we obviously want to do that, so he hits it like that, and we, we can damage him, right? Soon he's going to go to his next phase. He has like an enrage that speeds up all of his movement, so it takes a little bit of getting used to a little bit of practice. Nothing too hard, though. And this is only the first boss fight, so rather simple, and I won't spoil the rest of the boss fights for you guys. I definitely think you guys should see that yourself. There we go. So our, our enraged Yeti boss is ready for one final attack, I hope. Uh-oh. I think I almost jumped into him there. That would have been real bad. Boom. There we go. We got him. So that's the end of the first boss fight, and we need that to progress. So you'll see he, he spawned a lot of... Runes for us. Triple runes. Yeah. And we're going to need those to progress, right? We're going to need that to get to a new area. So we get to this little bell thing. We're going to throw our axe into it. And that's going to help us deposit our, our runes. And with the boss dead, we can go to the next zone. So it's not just frosty, cold areas. There's also 
desert areas where this dude wants to talk to us and I don't want to talk to him because I'm gonna proceed and you'll see the lands definitely do differ right um I like it I like that the biomes change the soundtrack changes as you progress and there's of course new enemies as well so there's a lot to do a lot to see in the game the game's not all frosty not all cold um I have no idea how to get this rune and then survive how do you? I don't think that... So, there's a little block I can push, but I don't think that'll ever save me from this. So, watch. We're gonna go up. We're gonna slam down. One more time. And we're gonna push this block here. So, we're gonna break it, and we're gonna push it. How the heck is that gonna help me? I can do this, but, like, once you grab that rune down there, you fall into the thing. You fall into the spikes. But... Once you get it, you have it. So even if you die, you don't have to redo it. That's okay. What's down here? Death. So sometimes those falls are secrets. But they're worth checking. And you lose some gold on... Death. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna cut that out in, uh, in editing, guys. We'll, we'll cut that out. So, proceeding on. We're gonna go ahead and throw our axe in that... That target thing. There we go. So those targets allow you to do like a double axe throw. So if you throw your axe, you can't do it again, but you throw it in here, you can throw it a second time and continue on. So that's kind of trying to teach you how that's going to work. So there's new mechanics as you progress, new things to learn, new enemies to dodge. Ooh, can we do this one? We're going to jump instead, do that. Ooh, how you like me now? There we go. How do you like that? All right, enough of that. Let's move. Nice little song, right? All right, so let's... I gotta get revenge. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Damn, he's fast! All right. Okay, kill the bee first. And push the blocks on the... There we go. They're gonna respawn, though. Alright, so we're moving. Looks like there might be something back there. No, nope, just the shovel. Alright, alright, moving on, moving on. We're gonna go to the next portion of the video because I wanted to show you guys the other difficulty, right? So we're gonna jump into story mode real quick and we're gonna go to a new game. And I'm going to show you real quick something that I found very interesting. So hard mode, if you ever die, you gotta restart the game. Damn. <laughs> you gotta practice for that one. And then cursed mode I thought was pretty cool. As you're progressing through the game, these little clones will spawn and mimic your movement. If they catch you, if they touch you, you're dead. So you gotta stay on the move, you can never really rest, you can't take a break, you gotta be quick. Move, 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 before these dudes catch you, and we're gonna go in here. And we're moving on, we gotta go get our axe. I messed up the, the ground slam, and it got me killed. So this adds a hell of a uh, difficult challenge to the game. Move, 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 move. We gotta go get our axe. All right, we're going for the axe. Are they gonna hit me right after I load into the, like? Go! Oh, what the hell? <laughs> what the? <laughs> that was really funny to me. All right, well, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> The pros, cons, and final thoughts for Jackax. Actual combat. Enemies and bosses. Spoiler alert, pure honesty, I'm not a huge fan of the puzzle platformer genre, but the combat added enough variation and enough flavor to the game for me to keep me hooked, right? And it kind of... It kind of got me used to the puzzle platforming aspect of the game, which is the main, right? It's the main aspect of the game, and, and I found myself kind of enjoying it a lot more because 
there was combat to look forward to and enemies to kill and it, it kind of got me like like hooked i kept going i kept trying to get better and and get through the game get through the puzzles so i really really enjoy it i enjoy the the overall game design with a, a nice mix of of combat and and puzzles challenging as hell you better practice so it feels very rewarding when you get through those puzzles that are very difficult but it does get quite hard it gets it gets challenging right but it it feels great it feels great when you finally conquer that puzzle that you're you're having uh a hard time on right and the nice thing is it's got multiple difficulties so there's difficulty for everyone and that's one of my pros and lots of secrets Lots of secrets in the game, a lot of stuff to find, so keep your eyes peeled for those little, like, hints, little sparkles, listen to the NPC dialogue, read their text to make sure they're not, uh, they're not trying to point you in the right direction to a secret, because some of them do. And then, like I said, it's a difficulty there, there's a difficulty there for everyone. There's that challenging one with the Jackaxe clones I thought was a nice, a nice touch, a nice little, I don't know, throws a little extra flavor into the game that maybe, maybe you play through it on... Um, an easier difficulty when you first go through, but you wanna you wanna mix it up a little bit. Next one, throw in the uh, the clones, definitely makes it much harder. And then of course the one that's like, if you fail at all, you restart. Damn, that's tough. I, whew, I would need a lot of practice to get that done, but that's gonna be tough. I think I will do it though. Co-op. I got an opportunity to play co-op with a friend and it is fun and it plays well and you wouldn't think so You wouldn't think it would play well in this type of game But you play the entire game in co-op. It's not just like oh, here's the five co-op puzzles. No, it's the entire game and it's it's Funny it is a lot of a lot of good times a lot of laughs when people are dying to stupid crap It's a blast. I had a good time in co-op and it's, a, it's got a charming design. It's got like a pixel type of classic design to it, but it's got like an anime JRPG type of character bust design almost, right? When um, they're they're chatting away in dialogue and their story's progressing. You, you have a nice, nice character design. They, they did a really good job on that. Cons. So I find that the axe throw can sometimes kind of lock up, where you'll throw the axe and you'll try to like propel yourself and your character will move like a little bit and then get stuck. And I find that happened, it, it's, it doesn't happen enough that I consider it a major bug, but it can get a little frustrating. It's, it's, I would consider it a minor bug because it, like I said, it doesn't occur too often, but I hope it gets addressed. And, um, this is based off the post launch, about a week before launch. I'm, uh, really, really testing the game and playing a lot more of it, but it's in the game. I'm hoping it gets patched out and I would happily try to help, um, Isolate the cause of the bug and get that resolved. Infinite gold. I thought this was weird. The infinite gold farming restart approach that I showed you guys. I, I, it's a weird design that restarting doesn't reset your gold to the prior amount. And I'm almost wondering if... When you die, you lose gold. That That's how the game's designed. And I'm wondering if that's... Not necessarily the wrong approach... But it's an approach that can be adjusted. What if we just did puzzles and the gold that was there, when you get it, you lose that specific gold when you die. And you gotta get it again, complete the puzzle, and then go on go on. And the next checkpoint will lock that gold. You got that, right? So when you go back in that room, that gold's not there anymore. So you can't just bounce between rooms and keep farming the same gold or do the restart and farm the same gold. It's just like, hey, there's a finite amount of gold in the game. But you keep collecting them, you keep collecting the gold, that could be an achievement too. Collect all gold in the game. And you get all the gold in the game, you can get everything. You can, There's enough gold in the game, and maybe, and then some, you know, there's extra gold. If it takes 10,000 gold to unlock everything, there's 14,000 gold in the game. I'm wondering if that's a better approach than the whole, you die, you lose gold, so go back and farm more, and keep restarting rooms, and keep revisiting old rooms, and just bounce between them and farm gold. I think that might be a better approach. Just a finite amount you don't lose when you die you only lose the gold in the room you're in when you die so you can try to really get the gold during the puzzle survive the puzzle and once you complete that puzzle you lock that gold in because you got the checkpoint it's yours you can't lose that i think that'd be a better approach anyway moving on final thoughts jack axe is a blast it's difficult challenging charming and an all-around good time the co-op experience works quite well and really adds to the fun so bring a friend or three 
because it's four player co-op with enemies puzzles bosses and secrets jack x stands above the rest of the puzzle genre games the puzzle platformer games and keeps me hooked i hope you guys liked this look on jack x i'm really having a good time playing it and you guys can definitely catch me streaming it if you uh head to our our twitch and uh yeah if you like the content please throw us a like throw us a sub always appreciate that and i will catch you guys in the next video Skip.